Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can restrict the influence of deformers using the restriction tag. Okay, so I've got a scene here. It's pretty simple. I've just got some lights. I've got a um, I've got a plane with a bend on it, just to create this studio look. And in the middle, I've got this cube object, and I've subdivided it. Let me just turn on the mesh NB. Um, I've subdivided it enough so when we deform it, you know, uh, there's enough geometry there to de describe that deformation. Okay, so first things first then, with my cube selected, I'm going to go into the deformer menu and I'm going to choose this formula, but I'm going to hold shift when I select it. This will automatically make it a child of my object. And um, if I press play, this is the kind of thing we get. I'm actually going to change its setting so it's uh, X radial and we get this kind of thing. Now, <clears throat> this may be what you want, uh, but what if you only want this effect affecting part of your object? One way to do this would be to uh, use a fall off. So if we go to the fall off tab of the formula and uh, create a linear field, I'm just going to bring the size of the linear field right down so it's very, very small. And then I'm going to position this so it's only affecting this front plane here. And there you go. So that's affecting this, this part of the object. Um, job done. But what if you want to, um, what if you want this deformation to be affecting specific parts. So it's not just here, but what if you wanted it to be affected here, maybe a patch here, another patch on the top. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to do using this method, but we can do that using the restriction tag. So let's get rid of our linear field and go back to the beginning there. So we should be returned to what we had. Yep. Lovely. So on our formula, I'm going to right click Cinema 4D tags and down to this uh, restriction tag. And that will add this to our formula. Now you can see that the formula is no longer working anymore. And it's because there's no selection telling this tag. Um, this is what these fields are for, by the way. So in the restriction tag, we've got these six fields and it's expecting to see a selection of some type in there without any uh, selection in in there it assumes that uh, no deformation should take place anywhere we need to specify where that deformation is taking place so there's a couple of ways we can do this um, we can do this with a polygon selection so if I go into polygon mode with our cube selected nothing's going to happen because this is still a primitive so we need to make this editable so I'm going to hit C now we've got access to the polygon information uh, I'm in polygon mode, I'm going to go to select and uh, actually I'm going to go to my move tool, come out of this camera and I'm going to make a selection. So I'm going to select this and then hold control shift, that will give us path selection and then do this and then I'm going to press UF, that will change it to fill selection and I'm going to hold shift to add this to our selection. So now we've got all these polygons selected. Go back to my camera view. I'm going to go to the select menu and say set selection. Now you'll notice that we've got this triangle up here now. Uh, it's basically a placeholder for data. So if I unselect our selection now and then double click on this selection tag, it holds information about that selection in there. So let's twirl this down and uh, select our restriction tag and then drag this selection in and come out of polygon mode that might help there we go so if i play now you see that our deformation has been completely restricted to that polygon selection now the only problem with this our polygons are getting stretched where there's where there isn't a transition and that's kind of the problem uh, this may be an effect that you want but um it would be nice if we could blend between you know, instead of just saying these polygons have the deformation and anything outside of those don't, it'd be nice if we could blend that transition off. And we can actually do that using vertex maps instead of a, a selection like this. So let's get rid of our selection tag and also make sure that we clear this poly selection in our restriction tag and select our cube, polygon mode, and then we go to the select menu again and say set vertex weight. It's currently set to zero and that's fine. I'm just going to press OK. Now our cube has this tag 
on it our vertex map tag now is completely red and that indicates that each vertex across our model has a vertex weight of zero percent so i'm actually going to paint our weight on so i'm going to go up to in fact i can double click the vertex tag and it opens up the paint tool i'm also going to come out of our camera and i'm going to change this mode to absolute and i'm going to select these points in the middle here just once and then i'm going to change this to a bleed and then i'm just going to click apply all a couple of times as you can see it actually uh, it's quite a big area that did so i'm going to undo that a couple of times i'm not sure if this is a bug or not but if i go to smooth it unlocks this value here and i think by default it's one and if i go back to absolute um sorry bleed now and then apply all you can see that it only expands at one um sort of polygon layer at a time okay so that's fine for what i want but as you can see the transition is still quite harsh so using this map we'd probably get uh, results very very similar to what we had before with our polygon selection so i'm going to change our mode now to smooth and i'm going to crank this back up to four and i'm going to apply this a few times and as you can see we're getting this blend now so let's go back to our camera and go back to our restriction tag and I'm now going to drag our vertex map tag into that I'm also going to go back to object mode and let's rewind and play and as you can see it's less uh, it's way less harsh now um, we've got like a bleed off so you can see there's still a little bit of strength on the edges here but it drops off pretty quick and uh, if we go into our this view uh, it looks quite smooth I think Okay, so let's get our lines back, NB. Okay, so that's how you'd go about using the vertex tag for that stuff. Uh, you can also do multiple selections for multiple deformers. So let's add another deformer. I'm going to, with our cube selected, same thing again. I'm going to go to our deform menu, holding shift, I'm going to select the displacer. Now this is a child. And in the display so I'm going to go to the shading tab and I'm just going to add a noise so now we've got a noise there it looks quite uh, quite big so I'm going to actually go, go into the noise and move its global scale down to something like 5% and we get something like this and I'm also going to have this animated as well so in the noise this animation speed I'm going to set to 1 and then press play and we get this type of thing it's not very easy to see, so I'm going to bring the displacer height down to about five centimeters. And you can see that we've got this displacement laid on top of the formula. Now, something I should mention now is that the order of these, the order of these um, deformers actually matter. If I take this displacer and put it underneath the formula and then press play, you can see we're getting all kinds of problems. And that's because this formula is working first so it's doing this animation and then the displacer is laid on top of that formula and it's having trouble because the formula is it's kind of doing a displacement using maths the displacer is now having trouble um, figuring out how far it should displace geometry out because it already has been so if we order it the other way you can see that we get a nice smooth result so that's just something to bear in mind okay so let's restrict the selection of our displacer so let's do the same thing again right click cinema 4d tags restriction tag and now you can see all that's gone away because these fields are empty and we're going to need to make another vertex uh, map so with the cube selected and it's really important that you make sure this vertex map tag isn't selected because if it is and you go to create another one select menu um, sorry I need to be in polygon mode yeah if this is selected and you go to select menu uh, set vertex weight you will overwrite the data in this tag so make sure that that tag is not selected we'll have our cube selected polygon mode select 
set vertex weight and again I'm going to set it to zero and now we have a second tag. Um, I'm just going to double click that tag so we get our paint tools up. I'm going to bring this smooth back down to one again and then go to absolute. I'm also going to come out the camera and this time I'm going to go around the back side of our model and I'm going to click in the middle here. Same thing again, I'm just going to go to bleed and then apply all and this will grow our selection outwards. A little bit more I think to maybe there, maybe a little bit further and then I'm going to go to smooth, crank our smooth iterations up to four again or even five and then just start applying that just to smooth that out uh, and that'll do us. So just like before on the display so I'm going to choose our restriction tag and drag this, I think it's that, yeah, it's our first, uh, this vertex map into this field. And then I'm gonna come out of polygon mode and go back into our camera. So as you can see, our displacement has been restricted to this area here, but you'll notice that it's also been applied on our formula. And you're probably thinking, why, why is that? Because I've told it it's restricted to this area, so why is this happening here? And it's to do with our vertex map names. If I ch click on this vertex map, you can see its name is vertex map. And if I choose this one, you can see its name is vertex map. So when I look at these restrictions, you can see that it's got vertex map in there. So this displacer is saying, restrict it to this object called vertex map. Well, these are both called vertex map. So what it's doing is it's actually taking both of these maps and kind of kind combining them, multiplying them together or adding them together. Um, and that's not what we want. So let's rename our vertex maps. So this first one here, this stuff here, I'm going to uh, rename Displacer. There we go. And you can see that's gone away now. And I'll show you why in a minute. And let's choose our other one. And let's call this Formula. It can be any name you want. Uh, I just thought it makes sense to name it after these objects. Okay, so now we're seeing that nothing is being affected and that's because if we go into our restriction tags, it's still referencing vertex map. Okay, so we can, we'll have to redrag these in. So let's um, grab our vertex map for our displacer and drag that into this. Boom, this lot's been displaced. Let's do the same for our formula and replace that with this one. Boom. So now we've got a scenario where We've got displacement being uh, restricted to our selection for this vertex map and our formula being restricted to a selection for this vertex map. So you can see how powerful this could be. You can make multiple selections. You can even blend stuff together. Um, yeah, so it's pretty good. I'm actually going to tweak our displace for a little bit just to make it a little bit more severe. Let's crank this up to 10. There we go. And we could even whack our cube inside a subdivision surface so with the cube selected and holding down alt we can make this a parent of these objects now and let's go back into our other view and we've got a pretty smooth result there okay just to really hit home i'm gonna actually i'm gonna hide the cages for our formula and our display so just so you know our viewport's a bit clearer and i'm gonna add another deformer so with, I'm going to select the cube, I'm going to go into our deformers list and I'm going to add a twist by holding down shift and that adds it as a child. And again, this is a really good example of, of um, order priority. So if I twist this now, you can see that our displacement is going absolutely ballistic and also our formula doesn't look like it's doing what we'd expect it to do. So if I just let this play now, in fact, if I take this back down to zero, you can see our formula is acting upon this side of our object. Uh, that's that selection. And as I twist this, it kind of doesn't come with it. It sort of stays where it is. And it's again, it's because of the order. So if I take this back to zero and actually put this twist at the bottom of our stack, so things are happening in this order, you can see now when we play, and we actually twist, things react in a much more predictable way. 
We could even bend this right round. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you that, guys, how you can restrict um, deformers and restrict deformation of different types to the same object using vertex maps and selections. Uh, that's it. For my viewers on YouTube, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can check out content at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category and vote in the poll for upcoming tutorials. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description and the footer of my website. If you'd like to help support Digital Meet, this can be done via Patreon or the support page on the website. But if you want to help Digital Meet keep going and bag yourself some extra in-depth tutorial content, the Prime membership is available for purchase in the store. This will grant you access to the Prime membership area of the website. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.